I mentioned Van der Breggen winning Omloop um, and, and the relative prize pot between what was on offer for the women at Omloop compared to what was on offer for the men at Omloop uh, has, has rightly been um, the sort of main topic of conversation around the men's and women's world tours this week. Um, I mean, as, as, I, as I've already said, we're recording on Saturday after the, the racing at Strada Bianchi has finished. Um, but with it being International Women's Day on, on Monday, there's possibly no better time to have a conversation on the subject of equality. So, Laura, we were talking about this at, at length earlier. The, the, the crowdfunding that um, Strada Bianchi had to rely on in the end today meant that the cash for the, the, the prize pot for the women's race actually exceeded the prize pot for the men's. So I know you've been keeping a close eye on this in terms of the numbers, um, but thanks to the public, not the race organizers, we must stress, there was a pot of more than 25,000 euros for the women's peloton, um, which, which exceeded the men's. Yeah, so that was then added to the 6,298 euros that the race had initially put up. So that equaled over 31,800 at the time we're recording now, where the men for the top five riders were only receiving 31,600 euros. So ironically, the women's prize pot is now bigger and growing than the men's. And Chantal van der Broek Black is looking to get over 10,000 euros for her win today as well. On the prize money debate, I think it's been raging on Twitter all week. And I think you can't really do a subject like that just Justice, a nuanced debate like that justice in 280 characters. And I know there's lots of different opinions flying around and whatever else. For me, I think with prize money, the rich get richer. And often if you've got SD Works winning week in, week out, which it seems is looking the way at the moment, that's not necessarily going to benefit the whole of women's cycling. It isn't this golden ticket that will fix women's cycling. It's, but only, it's, it's only going to benefit the top riders. The, the... Exactly. Yeah. It's, but it's one piece of a big puzzle. Uh, I think TV TV coverage and the narrative is is more important. But what it does scream out to me, the shocking disparity says we value women less. That's what it says quite clearly. And when you look at the sort of pie chart that the internationals released, it says it so blatantly. And that's that's appalling as optics for current sponsors, for would-be sponsors looking to come into the sport. It doesn't say you're particularly valued, though, as an athlete with the public having to raise money for the prize fund that you're competing for, though, Brad? Yeah, I've, I never understood prize money, really. I mean, it's... Um, <laughs> I just well, you had enough of it. Well, no, I didn't, because <laughs> I won everything, so it goes to the other people. You know, it's... Um, the people who work for you, you mean? No, the riders, yeah, yeah. 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 Just in in the race. The tax yeah. bill. Yeah, um, no, I'm, not, I'm not talking about your butler. <laughs> no, I mean, it, you know, it, I, just, I just... Prize money is sort of at the end of the season, you know, it gets split between the riders, and it's not something that's on your mind when you're racing. You know, you talk, don't think, oh, I'll get third or fourth, because... You know, there'd be a lot more money. It's just for me, anyway. It just never came into it, um, and I've, I almost forget it's there sometimes. And it's kind of a nicety at the end of the season. But for races to be under that much pressure to raise prize money, I mean, it, for me, races should always be the, how prestigious it is to win a certain race, and not what comes with it. Um, you know, and the jersey and the materialistic items like a medal or a trophy become, you know, at the end of Paris Bay, get a cobble. I couldn't even tell you how much it is to win Paris Bay prize money wise, and that tells you everything really. And it's it's. You know, I think we need the races more than riders need the prize money. You know, ri riders get paid enough money in this day and age, and rightly so. And I think, you know, for, for races to be at jeopardy because they can't raise prize money to pay the riders on top, I think we should just be be grateful that we've got racing on at the moment. And, and you know, the, the strain a lot of organisers are under in order to put these races on, I think it's an added pressure. Um, the women's side is a bit different anyway because they're, they're underfunded in many ways, and, and it's not equal. But um, certainly for the men's side of thing, in, in this day and age, the men should almost have a be willing to give up a side of the sport in terms of, you know, to, to, to improve. It's where we, everyone needs to help each other, really. Um, well, the, the, races, the races would say that they, they can't decrease the men's prize pot because of the UCI rules. UCI rules say well, you've, got, you've got to have a certain... Well, UCI, UCI rules say you can't have socks at a certain length and UCI yeah. rules say you can't hug each other. So, I mean, you know, that's what happens. You know, we've got Mickey Mouse and his mates running the organisation. It's just it's the UCI. I mean, um, you know, let's not get... That's a whole other episode. Well, that's, that's the thing. I think everyone was sort of screaming at the race organisers and Flanders Classics and saying, you know, this is awful, this is disgraceful. And I understand that. But actually, I think there is a wider subject, as you say, Brad, that this is ultimately the UCI who, who have power over their sport and, and need to police that and, you know, have the authority to say prize money must be equal or, you know, whatever they want to say. But they, they kind of need to step in and take responsibility as well. 
There's a nice line from Lizzie Banks on, on this where she says there's no magic answer, uh, but it's all part of creating an environment where women feel valued. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, but like you say, Laura, it's, it's about putting all the pieces of the puzzle together to, yeah. crea to create that proper environment. And, it was and a constant story, isn't it? Every year we, kept, we still have the same conversation. Yes. Nothing ever really seems to get done, does it? This is what Eleanor Barker said, because she's guest edited Cycling Weekly, um, coming out this week, obviously in line with International Women's Day as well. And she basically says that she wishes that we could be talking about the brilliant racing and not sitting here moaning and moaning about no TV coverage and no prize money. And I feel like I've been talking about this since about 2014, 15, yeah. and it never seems to, to go away. And what's being lost is how... That bloody brilliant women's racing actually is and I hate the fact I've even just said women's racing because it's just racing it's just bike racing and cycling and it doesn't matter what's between your legs on the bike it's just good sport and to to paraphrase Eleanor Barker um she she said that the best thing I can do as an athlete is to put on a show and the best thing you can do as a reporter uh or a journalist is to report on all the drama and the intrigue and, and the value that we add in the best way that you possibly can um, and, I, and again, I think, I think that's, that's about right. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it was a brilliantly worded letter and she put it all very succinctly as well. I think almost we add to the contribution, we contribute to the lack of coverage by sitting here talking about prize money when we could be talking about, well, let's talk about that brilliant teamwork from SD Works today. Let's talk about Ashley. Let's talk about Anna van der Breggen. But we're sitting here talking about prize money. We never see David Le Partillon, do we either? Always very quiet. Yeah, mm. and we haven't seen him since the Tour de France last until, year. Until the tour said, comes around, yeah. He said, within two years, we should, we're, we're hopeful to have a women's Tour de France, but we don't know what it's going to be called yet. Um, now we're getting into the sort of March already, the Tour de France a couple of months away, so it'll be one year. Um, you know, can I kind of preempt this now, getting pushed aside and going, okay, we're still not in a position to have a women's Tour de France next year, which is all it is now. And it's just, it seems a constant theme, constant story. You know, it's like the women just a side piece seem, seem to be in you know, um, a secondary story. And, and you never, you know, we keep saying the UCI, actually it's, it's the leader of the UCI. We need some leadership from David Le Partillon. And I don't think we get that enough really. Um, for once of July, he comes out and says a few things and disappears again. Can you see them leaning on COVID as an excuse on the pandemic? They, they'll lean on anything they have to, but I mean, who knows? Well, look, on women doing just as good a job. Um, and Laura, I can see your quote getting some attention. Um, <laughs> Which one, God? <laughs> no, ma on. no matter what's between your legs. <laughs>